Sarvatma, that is the supreme and that is the self of all beings. And not only that, it is the support of the whole Vishwa, the whole universe. Vishwa Syayatana Mahat. Uh, and it is very, very subtle, subtler than the subtlest. And that is you. <laughs> it is Nitya, it is imperishable. Tattvameva, that is you. And you are that alone. Tattvameva. Tvameva tat. That's the most beautiful statement made by Brahmaji. And then he said, it is not only the support of the whole universe, but also it is the illuminator of everything, all the experiences, in all the three states of consciousness. This is the illuminator of everything. At the same time, it is distinctly different from all these experiences. It is just the Sakshi and it is just the pure consciousness which is very auspicious. Chinma Troham Sadashivaha, he said. And then moving on, he further said, everything <coughs> arises in me, everything is rooted in me, and finally everything dissolves in me. And I am that non dual Brahman, and that is my Swarupam, he said. So therefore, it is not that we are born into a world and then we experience Sukha Dukkha. That is all non-apprehension, misapprehension. It is all avidya. That is Maya Parimohitatma. He said, no? It is all the jiva deluded by Maya alone thinks that way. But now, what we should really understand? We are the Supreme Self, the source of all being from which everything arises. Why? Because we feel, we think that there is a three-dimensional physical world existing. It is not so. <coughs> the mind only projects wonderful world. Like in the dream, so in the waking state. In the deep sleep state, there is no mind, therefore there is no projection. <coughs> So therefore it is nothing but thoughts only, manomayam only. The thoughts also if you analyze, the aham is the basic or the fundamental thought. All the other thoughts depend on this thought. And if you inquire about that I thought, even there is no I thought. That is the truth. So from me alone everything arises. Me alone everything exists and me alone everything dissolves and there is nothing other than me because I am non-dual. So this is the ultimate vision. And how to go about, how to attain this? We have to again and again contemplate on this. <coughs> and we should be wonderstruck and we should revel in this. And we should make it a point that we take this standpoint and not the other standpoint. Not the jiva standpoint. Again and again we have to accept. That is Vedanta Sadhana. What you meditate that you become. So when you say I am the self, I am the self in which everything arises. Yes, you are the self. Identifying with the body-mind, if you say, I am a poor, miserable jiva, I have nothing. Why me, God? Why me? If you cry like that, 
Yes, you have to cry all the life. People may sympathize with you for you know, some time. After a while, everybody is fed up. I tell you, sometimes people sympathize out of compassion. But you are, if you are going to be an eternal sort of a complaint box, cry maybe, cry maybe <laughs> then nobody can help. Is that not so? Even Brahmaji cannot help you. He will, wonder, he will only wonder, my God, is no day creational. <laughs> so therefore, Udhred Atman Atmanam, Natmanam Avasadhyet. Lift yourself by yourself. Don't degrade yourself. Why? You are your best friend and you are your worst enemy too. How beautiful. I tell you our scriptures are wonderful. So you have to lift yourself by yourself. The teachers can only guide you. And the scriptures are only pointers pointing to the truth. But we have to lift ourselves by ourselves. Yes, that is Ishwara Krupa, the grace of the Lord. And that is Guru Krupa, the grace of the Guru also. That is one more grace, Atma Krupa. <laughs> we have to bless ourselves. Meaning what? We have to shed off all these false notions. And we should not be weak at heart. And we should rise above everything. And we should assert our true self saying, in me everything arises. And in the seat of meditation, when the thoughts arises, when everything disturbs you, you should say, they are in me, I am not in them. Natpaham teshu temai. They are in me, but not I am in them. Meaning, because of my grace, the mind is there, the thoughts are there. Not the other way around. Either the thoughts are there or not, I am. So they are in me, I am not in them. Means the whole samsara or the vivahara depends on me. And I am not dependent on anything whatsoever. Independence is bliss. <coughs> Dependence is sorrow. In any form. Dependence in any form. In anything. Is sorrow and sorrow alone. Only when you stand up and say, I don't need any crutches from the world outside. I am what I am. And I am the Purna Paramatma. And I am the support of the whole universe. And in me everything arises. Everything subsides. This is the way to go. Vedanta Kesari means the line of Vedanta should roar this way. And Gurudev roared for his whole life. <laughs> Same truth again and again, again and again and again and again. So, till here, or even the next verse we saw now. Nuraniya nagameva tadvad Mahanagam vishwamaham vichitram I am the subtler than the subtlest. Nuraniya. Or the smaller than the smallest. On bigger than the biggest. How it can be possible? Because these Two things, the small and the big, are only estimation of the intellect. Buddhi vritti. But the Sakshi is the eliminator of both these vrittis. And even the aspect of in and out also is just a concept of the mind. Because we take the reference point as his body. So we say in and out. In, in fact speaking, there is nothing called as in and out. In the consciousness, everything arises and everything subsides. And the conscious principle is I am. Which is just the witnessing consciousness. So therefore, Vishwamaham Vichitram, and I alone am expressing as these names and forms, this world. Even in Ajnana, whatever is seen, even when you are glued to the idea of the necklace, the earring, the bangles, what you are seeing is gold alone. <laughs> is that not so? Therefore, Vishwamaham Vichitram, Puratano. Purusho Hamishaha. I am the most ancient. Parma Purusha I am. Purusha means not the man. Please. Here Purusha means something. Puri Shayanat Purushaha. Puri means this. This is the Puri. This is the city of with nine gates. Puri Shayanat. And this Paramatma is residing in this Hrithpundarikam. Hridayam. Hrithpundarikam Addeen Sunarlia. Vishuddham Vishokam Na Sunarlia. So he is residing in the heart, in this Puri, in this 
in the city of nine gates. Therefore, he is called as Purusha. And he is a presiding deity of everything. He presides over everything. In his presence, the Maya, the Prakriti is activated. In his presence, everything happens. But he is not involved in anything. See, this is the way to go. <laughs> not to get entangled in anything. See, I always used to admire Bhagwan Raman Maharshi because though he was born in Tirichudi, Yenda Chudi Ilum Sikada Sundar, he was never entangled in anything all throughout his life. Such was his life. From the age of 16, where he just got that experience, from then on, no looking back. Uru Tadumatra Mukadeya, Yenda Vahyana Sanchala Mukadeya, Yenda Shudi Ilum Sikala. He was just himself. Such was his great abundance. I don't know what he is, but we have to, as his devotee or disciple or whatever, Konjumad or 10% of the Varmatra Kavandam. Lati enna prayojanam. He is my guru, he is my guru. So we have to not get entangled into anything. No crutches from the external world. I am self sufficient. This is how we have to go. Hiranmayoham. I am that self effulgent Shiva Rupa Masmi. And I am the auspicious principle. There is nothing inauspicious about me. If you find something inauspicious about me, it is your problem. <laughs> mm. Next one. Apani Apani Padoga Mati Shakti. Apani Padoga Mati Shakti. Shamiya Shusta Shunomia Karnaha. Pashamiya Shusta Shunomia Karnaha. Aham Vijana Vivita Ruba. Aham Vijana Vivita Apani Pado, once again, Apani Pado, Hamachintia Shakti, Apani Pado, Hamachintia Shakti, Vashyame Chakshusa Shunomia Karnaha, Vashyame Chakshusa Shunomia Karnaha, Ambijana Vivita Rupa. In the height of uh, enlightenment, the Rishi is roaring, or the teacher is roaring, and the most beautiful mantra. What to do? Everything is wonderful. Is that not so? Apani padoham. Meaning what? I don't have any legs or hands. Achintya shaktihi. I am that unthinkable. Achintya shaktihi. That supreme power I am. You cannot comprehend what I am. Achintya shaktihi. Pashyami Achakshuhu. Without eyes, I see. Without ears, I hear. Aham Vijanami, I know. Vivikta Rupaha, but devoid, devoid of forms. Means I am beyond forms. Nachasti Veta Mama, though I know everything, all the forms, but none of them know me. <laughs> Nachasti Veta. Mama, chit nachati vena, nachasti veta mama, chit sadaham, and I am that pure consciousness always, ever. Meaning what? See, as I told you in the one of the class, <coughs> there is something called a swarupa lakshana and tatastha lakshana. Swarupa lakshana means indicating the self as it is. <coughs> that is sometimes very hard, difficult. 
So, because self cannot be defined, if you try to define, you are defiling, defiling it. So, the other way is, Tarastalakshana means, you indicate to the world and our worldly experiences, and then through that you indicate the self. That is Tarastalakshana. As I told you, you are unable to point out to a house. Then you say, see, there is a crow, that house. That crow has got nothing to do with that house. But you, your attention is taken to that crow, you see the crow, and then you see the house. Similarly, since this self is so subtle, subtler than the subtlest, you are unable to comprehend what, because achintya shakti, then the worldly experiences are taken, and then through that, the self is revealed, or the self is indicated. Meaning what? We only know this body with hands and legs. Here he says, no, I don't have any hands and legs. But still, without me, these hands and legs don't function. Meaning, I am beyond this organs of action. But in my presence, all the organs of action are enlivened, energized, and they function in their respective fields. Similarly, I don't have eyes or ears, meaning what? He is beyond the senses, but still without the, uh, without the uh, grace of that Atma Tattum, Atma Chaitanyam, eyes cannot see, ears cannot hear. <clears throat> Is that not so? From the standpoint of absolute truth, there is no seeing, there is no hearing, there is nothing called as the world. But that is not the case here. Here, through the worldly experiences, the Paramatma is indicated. I don't have eyes and ears, I, I am beyond senses. But without me, whatever you see as senses, they cannot function in their respective fields. And I have no form absolutely whatsoever. But all the forms are my own expression only. <laughs> I, I express as I know, aham vijanam. Is it not so? The consciousness expresses what? I am conscious of this or that. I am conscious of my own mind. I am conscious of myself. So this is how the consciousness expresses. I am, I know. But nobody can know me. Nachasti hmm. vetavama. Why nobody can know me as an object of experience, nobody can know me. Because when there is an over the known, that duality, then that is not the truth. So therefore nobody can know me in that way. But if in you abide in your own self, since it is self-effulgent, it reveals of its own. The truth can be known only by itself. But that is also a very rough statement only. Why? For anything to be known, there should be a vritti na. But here, it is beyond vritti jnana. So it is just revealed to oneself. And there is no doubt about it. That's it. That's why they say, akantakhara vritti. So it is a vritti, it is not a vritti. All, all that stuff. But, actually speaking, nobody can know me means what? As an individual, keeping the individuality intact, from the standpoint of the ego, you cannot understand or comprehend this truth. That is beyond. Therefore, our Acharya's profound statement, you can never understand the truth. You can only stand under the truth. Mm -hmm. Meaning, what? You can be yourself. In that being, everything is done. In that being, you are released from all bondages. So it is just, that is not even knowing, it is being. Mama chit sadaham. I am that pure consciousness. I am that pure being ever. And it is imperishable. And avyayaha, it never changes also. Therefore, ever I am, that chit 
principle, that conscious principle I am. So therefore, even though I appear to be functioning through the senses and the organs of action, I am beyond. But without my presence, these senses, all the organs of action are not an element. Even though the, the electricity may talk this way, the electricity may proclaim this way. Even though I express this as light through the bulb, but I am beyond all bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I express through all the fans, refrigerators, whatever, equipment, I am beyond. But in, without my presence, no bulb will glow. So therefore, therefore, I know, but I am beyond all this knowing. Nobody can ever know me. <laughs> then you always remind as well. <laughs> so Mamachit Sada. And I am ever that one conscious, pure consciousness. Moving on. See these are all mantras for contemplation. It's not even to sort of understand word by word. You have to just revel in it, lose yourself in it, and that is it. You are taken out. You are taken into that. So such things you don't get anywhere. It's very rare. That's why Kaivalya Upanishad is most direct and most beautiful. Mm. <laughs> See, the first line also appears in Bhagavad Gita too, in the 15th chapter, Purushottam Yogam. This is the most wonderful way to express. In and through all the Vedas, I alone am to be known. There, Sri Krishna, he proclaims. So devotees think, oh ho, from all the Vedas, we have to know who is Krishna. No, Krishna is not talking as a cowherd boy. The blue boy of Vrindavan. Or not even he is talking as a guru or the friend of Arjuna. He is talking, he is identified with his own self and then he is just roaring in the battlefield. <coughs> so here it is very clear because we have seen Adharam Ananda Makanda Bodham and then we have seen Mayeva Sakalam Jata, Mai Sarvam Pratishtitam. So everything is explained beautifully and here it is said, said, Vedai Ranekehi Aham Eva Vedya. Aham Eva Vedya. 
So there are uh, four different branches of Vedas. It, there are no four Vedas, four different branches of Vedas. Rir, Yeju, Sama, Adarvana. But in Bhagavatam, Krishna talks only about three. I don't know why. <laughs> Adarvana. No, no, Adarvana no. came late. That's what people say. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that is also you said. Yeah. So, there are so many portions, mantra portion, brahmana portion, and you know, all those portions, and then Upanishads. So, in and through all those things, see the mantra portion is to purify your mind. And then the brahmana portion and all. The other portions are only to unify the mind or become making the mind one pointed through upasana and all. But Upanishad is to transcend the mind. But here it is said, through all the Vedas, one has to know oneself. That's it, full stop. Kaadane maadane vedane potri mayangum madhiri hal yadanurum nin rongum arivanre deivam in rodi ariro Subramani Bharati says, what is all this nonsense? Kaadane maadane vedane potri mayangum madhiri hal What is this Shiva, Rama, Krishna? Devi, this, that. Yet the Nurum in Romum, Arivonre, Devum in Rodi, Ariro. That pure conscious principle which is expressing as life or expressing as uh, the consciousness, that is the Paramatma. And that is me, my real self. So, therefore, Vedai Ranekaihi. From all the Vedas, what is to be known? Ahameva Vedya. That is why we are in love with Bhagwan, Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi. He never beats around the bush. He is very straight. <laughs> you have to come back to the source. If that is true, then why can't you come back to the source straight? In fact, that is so beautiful, that is so easy. I tell you, to meditate on a form or a mantra is very difficult. Why? Because always you are different from the form. That's why, that's how you think, you know. It's very difficult for the mind to concentrate on one form. But to focus the attention on one's existence, I am. You are the Madriana, Sukhamana, Easyana, Rumba Sulabaman, Unme Kadayadi. I'll put you away, Martin. You know, I'm one way, Vadangala, 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 that is why sometimes you know you have to have such great Mahatmas or great thinkers like Krishna Murti, J. Krishna Murti. He is also, I would say, manifesting as the same Lord, Avataram only. Because he destroys everything. Poda, chumma All these things are nonsense. Get out of here. And if you go to J Nisargadatta also, he is the same. He says, I am what I am. So hold on to that I am. So like that. So here, Ahameva Vedya. Vedair Anika. Vedair Anika. Ahameva Vedya. And the self alone has to be realized. And you cannot realize anything else. As God or something because always you need some sort of instrument of knowing which is faulty and limited. Only by dropping all the faulty instrument, whatever is revealed to you is the absolute. So, aham aham only can be realized dropping all the instrument, nothing else. If you see some forms, it is always through eyes and always through the mind. No air, no duality. So everything should be dropped and whatever remains is yourself Abide there, that is the way to go, that is no other way. Nanyapanta vimuktaya. 
There is no other go. At least I am very clear. I have no doubts. There is no other go. You have to abide as yourself, in yourself, by yourself. That is the way to go. <coughs> Veda am Takrad. I am the author of all Vedas. It is very true. Meaning what? In that great heights of meditation, everything is revealed to them. They are only the seers. They are not the uh, authors, all these rishis. That's why they don't put their names. What, what a wonderful tradition. They don't claim anything as their, theirs. Because of copyright, other hidden photo. But they say, we are not responsible. It is revealed to us. So it is for, it is for everybody. How benevolent they were. It is for everybody. You need not pay any sort of uh, NSL longer. Royalty. 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 Open source. Yeah. Everything is for everybody. That is the idea of our rishis. Everything is for everybody. So therefore, Vedanta Krid means this real self is the source of all Vedas. And Vedanta Krid Veda Videva Chaham. And who is the knower of these Vedas? I am the knower of the Vedas. Why? Without this conscious principle, nothing else can be known. So, he is also the knower of the Veda. Na punya pape mamanasti. Na punya pape. For me, there is no punya or papa. Punya and papa means what? Only when you function as an ego, with the idea of I am the doer, there comes the good and bad, the Punya Papa. And there the Vasana, Shubha Vasana, Ashubha Vasana. Then the merit and demerit. But I am beyond all this because in me there is no Katrutva Abhimana. I am not the doer, I am not the enjoyer. Therefore, I have no Punya, no Papa. I am beyond all these small little petty things. Na Punya Pape. Mama nasti nashaha and there is no destruction in me, meaning I am indestructible. See, to destroy something, you should have something else, na? As a, uh, what? Or aruvalo or tupaki, you don't win na, to destroy. There is nothing other than that in that. So who will destroy what? That is so subtler than the subtlest. How can you destroy that? So therefore, Mama Nasti Nashaha, Na Janma, I was never born. Why never born? Because birth means, it implies I was not available at a point of time, and then I have come into existence. But my nature is of one of that existence, Ulladu. Therefore, there was no period of time I was non-existent. Therefore, you cannot claim particular so-and-so date, he was this... Atma is born. In fact, the time itself is born from the mind, and which is the effect of avidya. So, therefore, I was never born. Na deha, indriya, na buddhirasti. I have no deha, I have no body, physical body or the senses, and even I don't have any buddhi. Meaning, Adatamura Amma Mula, Ade Buddhi Kettavan in Sunna, you are right, Amma. Putti get Tavanda, Putti Ladavanda, Putti get Tavan Mudel, Putti Ladavane. Yes, Allah Shastra Musul Putti Ladam, Putti get Tavanda. Penas, you know, meaning Nabuddirasti means even all these things are my conditioning. It is not me, it is not in myself. Like we take shirt, we put on the shirt, and then we throw away the shirt. Similarly, this Atma, the self, for some reason, put on this body, the senses, the mind and the buddhi, and it's functioning in the world outside. But then it discards. Because of the vasana or whatever, the avidya is still remaining, it takes on to another body, another vehicle. You know, but in me, there is no body or senses or not even the subtle 
antakarana, that is the body, the mind intellect equipment. I function through, but I am different, and in me, there is no body, mind, or anything of that matter. I am absolutely free and swatantran, swatantran. So I don't depend on anything. I remain as my own self. So that is the idea. Na punya pape mama nasti nashaka na janma dehendriya buddhi rasi. So therefore, from this verse, what you have to understand, you have to understand wherever you go, whatever you do. You have to come back to the source. There is no other goal. See, that is why some of our youth, when they go abroad for studies or for this or that, they come and take the blessings. Swami, I am going to UK. I am going here, going there. And I tell them, wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, but remember always, you have to come back. back to the source. So therefore, no escape. Sooner or later, Akashat Patitam Toyam Sagaram Pradigachati. Sooner or later, that water droplets which fall from the heavens should go and become one with the sea, ocean. From the ocean only, <coughs> because of the sun's uh, heat, it vaporizes and it becomes the water droplet or the this thing clouds and it falls as water and flows as river but ultimately it has to go back to the ocean from where it has come so similarly as if for some reason we have come away from our own self because of ajnana whatever so as if we have to go back as a advaita vedanti i should use this as if <laughs> otherwise i am not an advaita vedanti <laughs> as if we have to come back to the self. So going away is also an illusion. Coming back also is an illusion. Nothing has happened in me. That is the solution. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> so therefore, I have to come back to the source. I alone have to be known. So when you go to Bhagavan, he says, who is having this thought? Who is having this doubt? Who is having this problem? Who wants to realize? First find out that. Don't worry about gods. Let them take care of themselves. Don't worry about the world. Let whoever created it, let, it, let, let him take care of it. Let him or let her. Gender equality. This is male chauvinist society. Why can't you say, let her, let her uh, take care of it? <laughs> okay, 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 let her take care of it. <laughs> but you mind your business, you know yourself and abide in that. You understand? So when you go to Bhagawan, he will never answer any question about Ishwara or any question about Jagat. That all even Jiva, Jiva's various states, this, that. He says, Lath Kadharama, the notion of I am we inquire, the, the, uh, uh, inquire about the reality or truth of that I am. <coughs> inquire means you pay attention to it, it is revealed what it is. You find that that I am is not there. If I am is not there, where is my world? Where is my God? Oh my God, <laughs> there is no God. <coughs> no God means what? No God! Other than me, who is sitting on the clouds giving me rewards or punishing me? That is the fact, that is the truth. Only when you are in ignorance, saying that I am a poor jiva, I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, there comes a fantastic world in front of you because of your own vasana. And then you infer saying that there should be somebody who must have created this, who is running the show. Therefore, I am his servant. All those nonsense. All this comes only from the ignorance. First of all, the very ignorance is what? I am the body. Dehatma buddhi. When that is taken care, when you inquire about the truth of that, 
then there is no jiva, there is no the first person, therefore there is no question of second person or third person. The first person itself is not there, where is the question of second person? The second person comes only with the reference point of the first person. So this is very very significant. So therefore, when you go to Bhagawan, he says, no, 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 first you find out whether the first person is available, then we can talk about the second and third person. And when you inquire, the first person who is appearing as a kanda kanda, as a sort of a limited ego entity, is also not there. But in his place, 